Good evening and welcome to the East Brandywine Township Board of Supervisors regular session meeting for Thursday, May 17th, 2018. Just a reminder that a recording device will be used during this meeting and let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, Okay, Chief, we're going to hand it over to you for the uh, Police Department commendations. Good evening, I'm Chief Tosi. Uh, we have a couple commendations to get out tonight. Uh, we're going to start with our community commendation. Uh, this is awarded for an exemplary act by one or more officers in the performance of duties. So I have three awards and Kyle uh, Harshaw. Okay, I'd like to uh, just remind everybody, we have public comment for non-agenda items, uh, but before we get that, 
uh, just a reminder for the conduct of, of the uh, public meetings established by resolution 2001-08, the time al um, allotted to each individual making a comment shall be three minutes unless otherwise set by the presiding officer. Additional public comment may be granted at the discretion of the presiding officer at the conclusion of the meeting. So I'll open it up now for public comment for non-agenda items. Yes, sir. Well, for, um, if you want to, you want to do it from there. Or did you want to do it? From, uh, I believe there's a camera. Yeah. Too. yeah. Excuse me. Uh, would it be possible for him to use the microphone? For yeah, he. Thank you. The minutes. Yep. We can see them on our screen, so if we're not looking behind us, that's why. So, albeit it is a rhetorical question, what is the MS4 project that's required federally by all the townships? Municipal stormwater management? That's correct. You guys have annual presentations from Cedarville? It's been every six months lately. Every six months. Now, I, I presented my issue to the board last month. In the last month, when I was here at the last meeting, sitting right next to the Cedarville representative, did anybody introduce me or get to the bottom of anything? Scott, in particular? It's okay. two different issues. Now, if you guys can see these. Yep. Uh, here we go. Here's one with a date. Now we can see standing water. Uh, we can see well out of the easement. And we can see the brandy wine in the background. Can anybody point out any uh, sediment control to me? Any hay bales, any silt fence, any silt sock, any swales, any rock, any anything? Scott. No, you can't see any. Matt, I here? told you before that this is not a township issue. Okay. It is between you, Metropolitan Development, and Aqua Pennsylvania. The MS4 program is a Clean Water Act that's federally uh, required by everybody in America. And somebody who holds the position of township manager who's getting health care, who's getting paychecks, who's getting fuel to go out and survey these uh, construction projects. Now, here is my contract. Can we see this on here? Can we zoom in on it? If you could zoom in further, uh, you'll see that Hillendale subdivision, which uh, I found it interesting and very helpful on East Brandywine Township's websites, that one of the first videos uploaded, Scott Pearsall, it's six minutes in, makes a motion for his particular details to be accepted for the fire hydrant phase portions of Saldow Homes. Uh, Saldow Homes. Southdown Homes supposedly sold it to Metropolitan. So after repeatedly asking Scott Pearsall what's his involvement with this project, I find it very confusing that he was so involved in previous videos. And the other thing I noticed is there's 17 videos on the website. And when my video was uploaded, the very first video had all that stuff of Scott commenting on the details of Saudow and the water main. Now, last Wednesday I was here, 
and that video was uploaded. So I was, that initial video was deleted. So I assumed that was, there was so much storage available on the website, but now with last, or last meeting uploaded, I now see that there's plenty of storage on the website, but for some reason, whoever's in control of that content deleted it. How long, how long ago was it? Excuse me. How long ago was, was the video that you're, that was up? It's not long on. Well, it seems like several videos were uploaded on February 2nd, 2017. I can only imagine that's when the website was capable to support videos. Yeah, and I know, I don't know what the time frame is, but I think we have a, a one year or. Yeah, when, when uh, I can speak to yeah, that yeah. If, if, if you recognize me to do so. Go ahead. Um, First of all, my name is Luke Revan. I'm the assistant township manager, and I'm responsible for the capturing of the videos and the posting of them. Uh, when the board adopted uh, the, the system we used to record in June of 2017, they passed a resolution that had a records retention policy for the videos we're creating, and that is six months. So every time a video goes up, generally one comes down, the oldest. And in terms of memory, that is a concern, but that's not the reason I do so. We get 10 gigabytes of space on our website to host. And like I said, the last meeting was uploaded without the oldest one deleted. So why was that initial one with the details that I'm inquiring about deleted? And can I get access to it? Uh, if the if the record is still in the possession of the township, you can do a right to know for that for that record. Yeah, but like I said, we control of the content. If there was suitable storage and everything, why did you delete it? He didn't say he deleted it. He said we may have a copy of it, but that would be have to done be, to get a copy of that. You'd have to go through the right to know request, the same as everybody would have to, including a supervisor. Well, don't you find it slightly? If I just reiterate my position for clarity here, the township has a resolution related to the uh, retention of those um, videos, and that is six months. So when a video is posted, at the same time that it's posted, its date of no longer appearing on the website is programmed. So while I take actions to add programs, I never take action to remove a video. It happens automatically based on its date. So if it's unusual that there was a period of time when a video went up and none went down. It has to do with the calendar. Uh, it has to do with not, oh, six months ago we were having the work session for July of, of 2017. It, it, the important and relevant question for when the videos come down is what was 180 days ago? but I'm not wasting my three minutes on you and deleting a video. So we have no sediment control. We have a contract produced by engineers that says East Brandywine Township directly on it. We have Zeterville, or Cedarville that does six months presentations for the important for storm runoff management. Let's go to the next thing. So if you're here to protect the public and everything, I made note of this called East Brandywine Township Police, here's when they were delivering the pipe. When they only had access for 20 feet of the property, they're currently 215 feet out of the easement using the driveway and everything. And then they hit the uh, telephone pole support. Here it is over a year later when I have five or six phone calls into Scott Pearsall and nothing's done to it. For, it's the, not for, even the, for the telephone pole? Yeah, the telephone support. Okay, and that, and if if I'm not mistaken, that would be that would be uh, Pico's responsibility and um, Verizon. Or Verizon, and uh, and it's and it's the state that would would correct. A lot of everybody else, huh? Okay, so this isn't your problem. This isn't your problem, and this isn't your problem. Uh, where's my tax money going? Don't look at me like that. 
You say you made six phone calls to me, you made one, and I still have it. Phone, one phone call to you in the last month, Scott. And uh, besides adding to the agenda that somebody can only speak for three minutes at a time to suppress my questions, I noticed that there was never that, that comment on any previous agendas. Well, it was brought up in 2008 because it was obviously an issue back then, but the reality of it Ten is it's, it's always been an ordinance. 2001. Okay. It's been in place since 2001. So I can't speak for, thir or I can't go past three minutes speaking, but are we viewed in here? That's the closest you can Somebody zoom can into submit that? Submit whatever he wants yeah. in writing. It's just On any one individual item, I can zoom in. But I watch the other videos. I can't. The, I know the capabilities of your technology. You have the other videos. Which on Which one website. do you want zoomed in on? I mean, if you just want me to keep coming in here with lawyers and stuff, that's fine. I mean, right. I'm just whatever. So which Which one do you want zoomed in on? Both of them. All right. So let's just focus Both just of them on the, what. Those both, two. Yes. Wait. I thought you couldn't zoom in any further, Scott. I said I couldn't zoom in on all those. Okay. Notice the original on the right and what Mr. Pearsall and his developers produced on the left. They literally highlighted over all the details of the contract, put unofficial across it, blocking every single detail that they could about the construction. And that's how the things are presented to the, uh, to the DEP. I suspect that the unofficial copy was put on there because this was copied from the Recorder of Deeds office, not the township. That's so correct. it's the Recorder of Deeds that put the unofficial copy on it. The township had nothing to do with that. And your reference to this being Mr. Pearsall's plan is totally erroneous. He had nothing to do with the development of this plan. He never made a motion because he's been a township manager, not a member of the Board of Supervisors. Six minutes into the, uh, to the November 2017 meeting, him specifically, the, the township manager update that you asked him about. You asked him, six minutes in, he said, I would like to move forward with all the details that I've been pushing so hard to get through on the Saldo water line. That's not a motion. You said he made a motion. He didn't make a motion. He it may he may have made a presentation as part of his uh, so this is my manager's township. report. Like here I so these people, even though I've been property audited eight times in eleven years. You have a private dispute regarding an easement that you were paid for. So you have recourse. Talk to your lawyer about it and take your recourse. It has nothing to do with the township. That's really your demeanor? That's my demeanor. So uh, me being uh, owning 3.2 acres and everything and a, ta uh, a homeowner since 2007, I'm here with developers with actual photo evidence and everything and you're just you're, argumentative? You're, you're, I'm not argumentative, I'm trying to tell you there's nothing that we can do to resolve a private dispute. It doesn't matter whether it's you or any other resident of the township. You made a contract, that easement, with Aqua, and that's between you and Aqua. That has nothing to do with what I'm presenting. I'm presenting this, what's the name of this township? East Brandywine Township. What's this body of water? The East Brandywine Branch. Uh, you have a federal responsibility to protect the waterway. Now there is there is a, uh, uh, you have to make permits. You have to approve the permits. The engineer has to come out and view phase completion and everything like that. Here we are, they, they drilled 410 feet underneath the Brandywine with zero sediment control. You can you see the directional bore <clears throat> through there. You can see the Brandywine in the back. And my question to you is, if you're not worried about this, do you realize they're putting in 200 and some homes that are all connected to each other? So if they're skipping steps right off the bat, can you be certain that they're doing their fire prevention correctly? That they're doing structural 
things correctly, that the topography based on downtown Downingtown, who's just installing a train station and everything and has flooding problems, are they really like working at the correct capacity for permeable and impermeable surface? That when this development's completed, it's gonna flood out downtown Downingtown? And will downtown Downingtown have repercussions and come and sue East Brandywine Township? for this being brought to the attention several times on record and still ignored? Have you brought your concerns to the DP yet? I keep getting silenced by Mr. Pearsall. At first, I was told that, I, when I called him, I was like, hey, this is what's going on. He, because I never had a good rapport with Scott Pearsall for some reason, but I contacted the FBI and the FBI told me the very first step was to go to local. So I called Scott, and then uh, Scott said to me that the, the developers have too much money that they were doing the exact same thing to the township. That is absolutely untrue. I never said that, and for you to accuse me of saying that is ridiculous. That's what you said. No, I didn't. All right, so here's how I'll leave it. I, I think for the time being anyway, can you put a packet together and have one for all the supervisors to read. Um, and, you know, at least we have a little bit of your storyline behind it so that we're not doing this in a, you know, we, well, can't, we can't solve the problem today, but. We can negate my entire story. My, my entire story will be handled with the prothonotary office, and I was granted the right to go to the Supreme Court, Mr. Fisher. You might want to look up the paperwork. I'm waiting to exercise that till I find out who is incompetent and who's doing it unintentionally. And at some point, it doesn't matter. If you're not effective at your position and can't handle your responsibilities, you need to move on. All right, and so that, if you're like, directing that to we me, We got a Mr. problem Kanapesky. with the waterway, we got a problem with the electrical issue, and now if we have any more problems, I've showed members of the board issues with trees, me being a master tree surgeon, and things that are about to come wrong. I've made Scott Pearsall aware of this several times, and if there's any uh, injuries or anything that result from it, I will be very vocal to where the responsibility lies. Okay, so can you put a package together for the three of us so that we can have the storyline on this? Two the three supervisors? Sure. Okay, thank you. Well, again, if you put your packet together, give it to the three supervisors, we'll at least give you what we believe to be your next plan of attack. From what I've heard tonight, though, and what I've heard from the last one is it was an agreement that was made between you and Aqua, which would be handled between you and Aqua. We can oversee things, but we can't overstep our bounds either. Thank, Thank you. you for no problem. Um, any other public comment for non-agenda items? How you doing? My name is Pete Dockerty. I live on Rolling Glen Lane, a resident of the township. Um, I first want to start out by commending the police department for all they do in East Brandywine Wallace, or Brandywine Wallace Elementary School. My son goes there, and they're always there, and it's just always good to see them. Um, that being said, this is more of a statement than a question for Chief Cozy. Um, two officers were recently let go, 
and I know you can't comment on them, obviously, because they're, they're in arbitration right now. But my question is, is this going to turn out to be what happened in 2008 with Sergeant Scheller, where he was let go and for unknown reasons, and then he, fought, he went to arbitration, he won the arbitration, and he was get, given a settlement? And then also in uh, was it 2013 when uh, Officer uh, Williams had some kind of an issue where he was let go and he was about to go to arbitration, and then he had another settlement that I would believe the taxpayers are paying for? Well, I'll, uh, let me address the, the, the question, uh, or the statement, I should say. The first thing is that decisions ultimately lie right here, the three of us. Right. So we hear enough information on anything, and trust me when I tell you, we're not easy on anything. And we have to make an executive decision. That's basically how it goes. So, so it, it, there's no blame that can be given to a chief or a police officer. If, if something goes wrong, it's because of us. If something goes right, it's because of us. Okay. So we have to make tough decisions every single day. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every single one of them I'm goes just, right. I'm, the thing about it is, is, I mean, there's, there's times where officers do things that they shouldn't be doing, and they would be suspended until there's proof there to show that they should be fired. So based off of everything? Based off of the, the previous, before you, Mr. Winters, and yourself weren't here, back when, um, 2013, when John Williams was fired, and then um, there was some question over his log or something with the firehouse, and, um, and then right before the arbitration was supposed to go through that, they settled. So apparently he did nothing wrong. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that. Uh, settlements happen all the time, and, and it could be just for a simple fact. If you have two legal entities working against each other and they're both working up a pool of money and somebody just has to say, cut it loose at some point in time, it's going to save taxpayers money if we go on for another six to eight months in a legal proceeding. So sometimes that does happen. Okay. Well, what, hap what happened with uh, Sergeant Scheller? I mean, he... I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Them. I wasn't, uh, Mr. Chairman. That, that these are personnel issues, and, and we shouldn't get into no, no, any specifics about any individual person. Well, I'm talking about the past. I'm not talking about the two officers now. Whether it's the past or not, yeah. there, there may. I'm not familiar with what happened in those two situations, but there may be agreements which prohibit certain disclosures, and. I would advise the board not to discuss this in a public okay. meeting. Okay, I just, I, in a public meeting, I just want to bring this to light. I mean, it just seems like an ongoing issue with how these officers are let go and then they end up having these settlements. I don't know how the, how the most recent one is going to come about. I mean, I don't know any details on that. That's why I don't want to comment too much about that, but. Well, I appreciate it. As I said, I just want you to know and everybody to know it is tough decisions, both good and bad, that we make sometimes. But, uh, you know, I personally put my head on the bed every night and I fall sound asleep. I understand that. But, I mean, as a taxpayer in a township, I mean, are we paying for all this, all these legal fees and all these settlements that are going out to these guys? Again, we can't speak to that. But, again, okay. rest assured, you have cooler heads prevail. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. You. Okay. Uh, any other public comments? For non-agenda items seeing none we'll move on to the minutes of the previous meetings for the board of supervisors may 3rd 2018 i move they be approved as submitted i have to uh, make a correction on the maple view i actually voted no on that um for the to approve the traffic impact fees oh well, well for the minutes yeah maple view Okay, so um, I don't think that I, I don't think that uh, twenty thousand dollars is is enough to. So we'll just change his to a nay for for the okay. Absolutely. Um, and then the planning commission for May second, twenty eighteen. We didn't. You didn't. You, there was no second. And it hasn't well, been no. Approved. I I I think I do recall that it was very quiet during that meeting when he had said it. So so you skipped to the planning commission. We haven't approved these minutes. But if he had, oh, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right, you're right, sorry. So we'll go ahead and make a motion to, to approve the Board of Supervisors meetings May 3rd, 2018. I'll, make, the, I'll amend my motion to include the correction that Mr. Winters asked for. Correct. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the Planning Commission, May 2nd, 2018, uh, those minutes are not yet available. And then we're going to go on to uh, the Treasurer's Report. Thank you. 
Bank account balances as of May 16th are as follows. General checking, $2,271,708.59. General fund investment, $772,180.73. State fund bank accounts, $621,653.17. Referendum open space, $2,247,368.56. Open space, $708,215.28. And traffic impact, $1,438,217.08. And there are a total of 105 invoices in need of approval to be paid. Thank you, Mary. Sure. Um, so let's take a minute and go over the financials. I'll make a motion that the disbursements be approved as requested. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, building and, I'm sorry, Assistant Ma Township Manager's Report. Township I've manager. been promoted there. Oh, it's I'm a, sorry, uh, Township Manager's <laughs> Report. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Last month I reported that the uh, Downingtown School District had agreed to uh, the easements and additional rights of way for the Bollinger Road Horseshoe Pike intersection uh, and the improvements that are required as part of uh, Pulte and the Maple View projects um, and moving ahead toward approval by PennDOT. Uh, all the outstanding issues have been resolved. The board uh, will consider later this evening um, uh, signing these documents uh, the school district will execute the documents uh, or these these and other documents at their next school board meeting which I believe is the first Wednesday in June uh, and the documents can then be recorded uh, Pulte's traffic consultant McMahon Associates has submitted an application to the township for the traffic signal for this intersection since the township will eventually own it uh, the board will also consider a resolution which is part of the permit application process for that traffic signal. Um, PennDOT will require copies of these applications and um, easements uh, for the traffic signal to approve. Um, we're hopeful that construction can then begin later this summer or early fall uh, of those intersection improvements. Township submitted an amendment to uh, create an age qualified residential community overlay district to the County Planning Commission on April 20th uh, comments from the Planning Commission were received this past Tuesday our ordinance task force reviewed those comments and is recommending that the Board of Supervisors advertise this amendment for consideration at their June 21st meeting uh, the board will consider this recommendation also later this evening uh, because the amendment includes a zoning map change uh, will provide notice to all affected property owners and posting the properties will be done as part of the overlay district and that needs to be accomplished not less than 30 days uh, and 10 days respectively prior to the public hearing uh, which will be June 21st um, also last night at the ordinance task force meeting 
Uh, they discussed the anticipated schedule for submission of the significant number of amendments to the definitions, zoning, and subdivision chapters of our land use code, uh, the second public meeting uh, for this project, which is required because of the funding from the Vision Partnership Program grant through the Planning County Planning Commission, is now scheduled for Wednesday evening, September 19th. And the last item I'm pleased to announce that the final draft of the simplified method for stormwater management for small projects was reviewed by our ordinance task force members last night. Uh, the amendment will provide a method for property owners with small projects of less than 2,000 square feet to create a stormwater management plan without the need for an engineer uh, in most cases. A few minor revisions were suggested last night which have already been made. Uh, I'll present this final draft to the Planning Commission at their June 6th meeting uh, with a recommendation to the board at their June 7th meeting to submit this draft to the County Planning Commission for review and comment. And I, I would expect the uh, consideration for the board to adopt this amendment at either their August 2nd or August 19th meeting. Thank you. Uh, Assistance Township Management, Management Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Last month, I announced a complete lineup of the Parks and Recreation Committee's events for this summer. Uh, a special newsletter dedicated to those activities will be in home soon. I'd like to briefly remind those present of only those events and that will be hosted by the township and between now and the next regular session of the Board of Supervisors on June 21st. On May 20th, the third and final uh, spring speaker series uh, uh, presentation by the Historic Commission will feature Pamela Powell, the photo archivist at the Chester County Historical Society. Um, her presentation will be on dating historic photographs. The event is free and open to the public. It will be Sunday, May 20th at 3.30 p.m. here in this room. Um, on May 23rd through 28th, Parks and Recreation will be uh, putting a display in the community park in honor of the men and women who serve our country. The uh, display consists of about 1,500 flags placed in, in uh, an arrangement in the uh, community park. Uh, on June 2nd, East Brandywine Township is participating in a paper shredding and electronic waste disposal uh, or collection um, program. Uh, it will be held at the Kmart on Lincoln Highway in Thorndale. It's a multi-municipal program. Residents can bring up to four boxes of paper to be shredded and collection hours will be from 9 a.m. to noon. On June 11th, the township will be hosting a Red Cross blood drive from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. here in the township building. Uh, you can schedule your appointment online using the sponsor code eBrandywine. On June 15th, the first of three free movies in the park featuring Disney's Moana uh, will be shown <coughs> at dusk uh, and featuring free popcorn. That was a well-attended event last year. Everyone is welcome. More information about these events and all events this summer can be found on ebrandywine.org um, or if you just go to our homepage and watch the slideshow, you'll see all these events come in front of you. Just click the one you're interested in. Um, that's all I have this evening. I will be on your agenda at least three times later down the line. Thank you. Uh, building inspector's report. For the month of April, there were 22 permits issued, seven zoning permits issued, total fees collected by the building department, $21,880, respectfully submitted Narain King. And Chief, the police department report. Good evening. The mother report for April 2018, police department recorded 1,609 incidents. We had 186 investigations, four criminal arrests, one summary arrest, Department investigated four traffic accidents. We issued 128 traffic citations, 37 traffic warnings, we conducted 44 vacation house checks, and officers logged 8,001 mile of patrol. Training completed, Officer Steve Tyree completed his annual uh, Pennsylvania J Net and tax certification for the department. And one late item um, that I'd just like to mention to the board is earlier tonight, Lieutenant in Kenich and Officer John Hayes attended a uh, police week function over at the North Brandywine Middle School 
uh, they met with the Coatesville Area Girl Scouts and were presented with trauma kits for all the uh, police officers in our department. So I wanted to thank them. Uh, you have copies of the monthly investigations that we've completed and the officers' activity reports. Thank you. Uh, East Brandywine Fire Company report. Thank you. The monthly report for April 2018, East Brandywine Fire Company was quite busy. We had 65 total incidents for the month, 29 total fire incidents, 36 total medical. In East Brandywine Township, we had eight fire calls and we had 15 medical calls. We had four training sessions with an average personnel of 24 people out at each session. We also averaged 15 volunteers for each fire alarm. A couple things to bring to your attention is the back of the report where we conducted our live burn training for the year with almost uh, 30 firefighters in attendance, which is pretty phenomenal for the volunteer group. Uh, two major incidents we responded to was a house fire in Cowan Township where we had 24 firefighters. And just last week we had an accident on 322 uh, at the Forks of the Brandywine Church with entrapment that we had nine volunteers in the middle of the day and extrication time was close to 14 minutes. So it was a good month. Thank you very much. Okay, old business. Uh, the appointment for Township Manager Scott Pearsall for the East Brandywine Township Pension Plan CFO. It actually should be CAO, Chief Administrative Officer. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Uh, new business. Execution of the temporary construction easement agreement and deed of dedication documents between Pulte Homes, Downingtown Area School District, and East Brandywine Township. As uh, the township manager indicated earlier, these documents all have to do with the improvements to Horseshoe Pike and Bollinger Road, including the signal to be installed. Actually, there are only two documents that involve the township. The first one is the temporary construction easement. That's actually between Pulte Homes and the school district, so we don't need to take any action on that. But the other two documents, one is a deed of dedication of additional right-of-way, and as was indicated earlier, that right-of-way is on the southeast corner of the intersection and then extends in a southerly direction along Bollinger Road, which will enable the improvements that need to be made in connection with the signal installation. So it would be appropriate to make a motion to accept a deed of dedication from the Downingtown Area School District for that additional right of way, subject to approval of school district, which we anticipate the first Wednesday of June. So moved. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The second document is an easement agreement between the school district and the township, and this has to do with stormwater drainage that will come from the new improvements along Horseshoe Pike and then drain onto the school district property where the proposed age qualified community is located. So it would be appropriate to entertain a motion to enter into an easement agreement with the school district for a permanent drainage easement as described. So moved. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, okay. We're going to go over to, uh, to, to uh, Luke for the Republic Services, I guess. Yeah, I have uh, no expectation that this is an action item this evening, but I wanted to bring to the board's attention that the current contract the township has with Republic Services as our waste hauler will be entering its fifth year. The original contract was written as a three-year with an option to extend into the fourth and fifth years. Um, pursuant to the second class township code, we are required to bid every five years, but we do have discretion in years four and five as to renew. Um, the, the contract says that notice is to be given to the hauler 180 days before the end of the year, uh, which would be July 4th. Um, I, ask for this to be an agenda item to ask the board what sort of information they would like from staff to make a decision about renewing, if any, or if we're ready to make a motion tonight. I, I guess the one question I would have is where have our residents' complaints been for the last few years versus in the past um, with our last hauler? Higher. Uh, the previous hauler was A.J. Blazinski. Uh, we had them for the full five-year contract. 
Um, if I were just to generalize, summarize the kind of service we're getting from Republic, the current hauler, is the number of calls are higher. On, a, on any given Friday or late Thursday, we receive more calls about missed stops. I will say that, that I, it is my belief that, that Republic is responding to those concerns consistent with the contract in general. So um, they're not getting it right as often the first time, but they are addressing the concerns on when they're notified of them. So, um, and, but, and but remind staff me, does get more calls. What, what about what was our savings in, in dollars from, from uh, that's the sort of thing why I asked in a month advance th that, that this be placed on the agenda. I would be happy to give you the previous five-year contract and this five-year contract if you're interested in dollar amounts. I mean, I was just trying to guess. Was it 50000 Was it 100000 I, I would. Uh, this is me shooting from the hip. I would say we are paying uh, less in year five of this contract than we paid in year five of the previous contract. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, if, you know, I personally never think it's a bad idea for for propo uh, for getting additional proposals for the RFP, but um, I don't know if you guys are ready to discuss that, but I'm throwing my two cents with. Well, I think before we decide to, to go forward, you're, if you're doing an RFP, you're going to not extend this contract. So then you're going to be um, limiting yourself to whatever numbers come in on the RFP. So before, I think that it would be a prudent uh, course of action. Perhaps um, Luke could uh, do a survey. I don't know whether there are other municipalities that have had contracts, RFPs done within the last year, and yep. we might be able to get an idea of what the pricing was out there for other townships before we move forward with um, uh, jettison this contract. And if you're going to do that, Luke, I would maybe stress to try to go to townships that um, a fit the criteria for the timeline, but also uh, approximate similar amount of residents. Right. I, I would report that in a per stop. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so no, historic don't. information and uh, a quick survey of surrounding communities of what they're paying. Yep. Okay. I can. I'll get that to you for your June meeting, and, and you'll be able to make a motion based on that. Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Luke, again, for the discussion of budget process for fiscal. Right. Again, well in advance of, of, of when things are due, um, the township has a tradition of appointing the uh, budget committee that um, in June um, for the next year. Um, included in your packet was the motion to appoint the, the committee members who were in the, in the 2017 uh, group. Uh, it, that actually is dated July. We were a little behind schedule that year. Um, the, the role of the committee is to review requests that come in from the various township committees and also from department heads and present a balanced budget to you. Again, based on precedent, um, the, that preliminary budget has been presented at your work session in November. And then, again, pursuant to the second class township code, the preliminary is advertised for your regular session of November, and your final is advertised for the regular session of your December meeting. Um, I asked for this item to be on the agenda um, to see if you wanted to make any changes um, to the way that we develop a budget and or solicit any uh, any of the previous members or any members uh, new members for the committee all right and we have a new new supervisor here so i'm assuming he would have some input that he would want to give same as i did when i was new so i guess we'll table this until until um Absolutely. i think it would be appropriate for at least at this point that we uh, last year, I think we got a couple of applications. If if there are people interested, I think we should make it known that we'll take applications, and I think we should contact the three resident volunteers to make sure that they're interested Still in in, uh, in doing it before we do any appointments. So, yep. okay, and I think we should add more more residents than three. And I don't think there's. Uh, a number that that we have to stick to is there by township no, no the, okay. the the budget committee is an ad hoc committee it's yeah. not described in our code okay. anywhere it, it they serve to uh, advise the board of supervisors okay good enough all right um, permission to use portions of wildbriar road 
Firethorn Drive, Holly Drive, and Timber Pass for the fifth annual run for the Parks 5K hosted by Parks and Rec on, the, uh, on August 18th. Would that be Luke again? Oh, it is me. I, I just leaped at the switch here. Sorry, let me zoom back out. All right. Um, in, uh, this would be the, the fifth run for the Parks 5K. Um, we have, uh, uh, we need permission from two different sets of road owners. Um, one, there's a brief section that is shared with PennDOT. We generally make application to PennDOT in, in June prior to an August run for the parks. Uh, in your packet is uh, the map um, of which roads are affected. Those roads are not closed in their entirety. They are open to local traffic. There are volunteers as posted at the major intersections for traffic control. Um, the um, uh, 5K, we had, um, in, in terms of notification of the residents, we do two things. One, every neighbor in that community gets a postcard mailing. And two, um, there are signs placed at the four-way stops throughout the community notifying them of the race. We have, to this point, received one complaint and that was in the first year, and that had to do with the type of markings we were putting on the road. So, um, paint. Yes, yeah. we, we have switched to a, um, a chalk uh, temporary paint as opposed to a permanent Rust-Oleum <laughs> for the arrows. Okay. So, I, actually, this is an agenda item. Uh, begging your pardon, this, this would, if I could have the board's permission to, to, uh, to close to local traffic these roads on August 18th. I have no problem with it. I don't either. So uh, so I guess we'll make a motion to pass okay, it. You don't really need a motion. I mean, it's just an acknowledgement that it's okay to do it. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Planning Commission recommendation to appoint associate member Jonathan Wright as member. I make a motion that we appoint Jonathan Wright as a member to fill the vacancy um, <coughs> created by the resignation of Ron Finelli. Um, can I talk? Yeah, absolutely. I want. I just have a couple questions as far as um, I'm a little concerned. I, I think I need to know number one experience, um, number two his attendance. And three, I know several people have been expressed interest that we're going to be coming in to do applications. So I think that, in my opinion, I think um, I'd like to see some applications before I feel comfortable appointing anyone. What, what's the, uh, the count of members right now? I believe we have seven members on the board. Yes. And we you have, have a facto? Seven, seven we have seven board, positions. Uh, And, and when, uh, Apple Cross. Sorry. he's a resident of Apple Cross. And, and Mr. Finelli's last day is? May 5th. Okay. Okay. So, so um, it's uh, vacant now. And, and I would just point out, because I know um, you gentlemen weren't around when we created this sort of structure, um, we had had decided with, uh, in conjunction with the Planning Commission to create this associate position so that we would have somebody who was participating in the process and when a vacancy came up, they would have the experience to fill that position rather than putting somebody on the board who, was, who hadn't been involved with the board at all. So that's the reason that we, with the associate position, I think Mr. Wright's the first one that, that filled that the associate position. Um, I was an associate. Oh, were you? Yeah. yeah. So was I. I think we, yeah. almost everybody's gone, gone through that process. 
Mr. Rawlings, I think there's going to be a few questions. Could I ask you to approach the microphone? There's no escape. I want the folks at home to hear your wisdom. Why didn't you use this? Uh, also, if you notice, your next appointment would be uh, Jim, who is going to, we are recommending as an associate. He went through the process of filling an application. Uh, we, we as a board interviewed the next associate and found that he has a lot, a lot of training in uh, business and building and, and things like that too. So we're trying to do that same step, stepping stone. Have you, have, has the plan commission ever not recommended a project to the board of supervisors? Yes. I can't name it all, but I've known a few that we haven't recommended and then they've come to, they, they have the right to come to the supervisors and make their own presentation. I think that it, it, that question requires further explanation in the fact that the planning planning commission has also been instrumental in making or getting developers to change the nature of the project and change the design of the project and that's where the impact is greater so looking at just the number of projects they rejected doesn't really is not a really an indication of how important they are and the good work that they do. No, I'm not taking okay. that away from anyone. But I'm just I saying mean, you, when you focus on rejections, you're not really look, seeing the big picture. We look at the safety aspects. We look at the, uh, the whole gamut of everything. And we, then we listen to all our consultants and then try to come up with our best recommendation. We are not a, we're not passing this. We're only making a recommendation to the supervisors to make that final decision. I think uh, Jonathan has worked hard, tried, gave good input different input. A lot of times it's different within uh, what we, somebody is saying, and so it's created a nice balance, and I think he would do a great job. He's uh, younger, uh, uh, which is another thing, too. We it's nice to have a diversity of age on the on the planning commission. I understand. I, I mean, I, I like John. I just, um, you know, I think that maybe if we, I think it might be beneficial to look at some applications, because I know, you know, one's an engineer, another one's an architect, and I think uh, even though insurance is important, I think uh, for purposes of planning, I th that might bring more uh, to the board, to your commission. So there is, I mean, the next person in line, it has a, a lot of those next qu qualifications, and he did do an application. There is another person I know has an application, but I have not seen it yet. So I, I we do look at that. So w would you be more comfortable with, with, approving your recommendation for your member tonight then you would be more comfortable for your associate member that way you would have a chance i mean you I, I i'm very comfortable with the member uh and i understand you're going to have a need for this because may 5th is or, <laughs> we, we lost well we need it for keeping a quorum right exactly always, not everybody's there all the time all right so i'll i'll second mr uh, I'll, I'll i'll second supervisor fisher's um motion for for Jonathan Wright, um, and so we'll have that vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. And then now we'll go to your planning commission recommendation for your appointment of Jim Grisillo. Now, I will tell you personally, I have uh, done some work for Mr. Grisillo, so I'm going to step out of the equation on this mm -hmm. and let the, the two supervisors decide this. And if they, right. you know, at least and at least we, you have a quorum right yeah, now, which is the most important. If you feel that there there is. Uh, need to have a second or third application uh, to compare them with Jim and get the best person on there. But that right now, he, he is very strong. He's strong-willed, and I guess you know him because of that. So, so I, like I said, I would just have, have a conflict with we've, him. So we've I'll had it on the board where we've had two associates sitting on, on, the, on the board with opinions. They're non-voting members. Why don't we just table that for now? So, okay, so then that's, uh, as Supervisor Fisher said, we, we'll, we'll table that for now, and then, uh, again, I wouldn't be able to vote anyway for that one, so <coughs> and that would give them a chance for, for these guys. To Great. Okay. But if, if there are people that are interested, I would suggest that they get an application in, we get it to the Planning Commission, and let them go through the process, interview them. I would also suggest, I know this was the case with Mr. Wright, and I think it's the case with almost everybody that's put on a, been on that board in the last number of years if they're really interested in uh, being on the planning commission they should start attending some planning commission meetings so that they see what's going on because um, sometimes people have a very different idea of 
but what it's all about. I know Luke had another application that he told me about and asked him to attend the meetings and uh, I never met the fellow that he so it doesn't show a lot I mean it's nice to have somebody there and so I would just suggest uh, Jason if there are people that you know that are expressing an interest in it um, ask, ask them to attend come, meetings come introduce to meetings themselves and and to the board to and because we want to be able to work together too but we sure, want to yeah. we want to have no, change difference of opinion so we can discuss that and get the, the best product for the uh, or non-product for the township and, and while we're on this discussion I would like to publicly thank Mr. Finelli for six years of his service to the Planning Commission and, and um, obviously uh, commend him for that and we appreciate that very detail oriented he was oh, I'm sorry he's very deep he was very oh. detail oriented so it yep. was great to have him on my and he staff. was also very active with the ordinance task force so he, right. he's an asset that will be uh, sorely missed Thank you very much. Um, okay, so this now we're going to go on to the appointment of, of Corporal Dan Orris as the Youth Aid Panel Coordinator. So moved. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, subdivision and zoning applications. We have none. Oh, we got a two page today. Um, I think the next item I have we need your permission to advertise the Age Qualified Residential Community Overlay Zoning District Ordinance. Uh, we would propose to have a hearing on that on June 21st. We need to advertise that and personally notify the owners of the properties that would be affected by the zoning change. I'll make a motion that we advertise the Age Qualified Residential Community Overlay District uh, Ordinance Amendment. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, resolution 14 of 2018, the appointment of Lieutenant Jeff Yankavich as East Brandywine Township Police Department's Open Records Officer. I'll make a motion we adopt uh, Resolution 14 of 2018. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution 15 of 2018, comply with right to know law. I'll make a motion we adopt Resolution 15 of 2018. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution 16 of 2018, expand the, Western expand the Western Chester County Regional Uniform Commercial Code Board of Appeals to include the city of Coatesville. Um, I'll speak to that. Please. <laughs> um, the, uh, the Regional UCC Appeals Board uh, has received an application from the city of Coatesville to join this group. Um, They'd be the 19th municipality that has joined the group, and the resolution basically expands the original um, uh, the original adoption that, uh, that that created the Western Chester County Regional. It's actually Uniform Construction Code uh, Board of Appeals, uh, and it's adding the City of Coatesville. Uh, to that, They've, the city has passed their ordinance. August, I'm sorry, April 24th, and the uh, existing members, the existing 18 members, must by resolution uh, approve the city's joining of uh, that group. So far, um, early in through the month of May, I think I've gotten seven of the 18. And I've gotten several others that said that they had it uh, scheduled for later in May to do so. Okay. I'll make a motion we adopt Resolution 16 of 2018. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution 17 of 2018, approve sub submission of the Bollinger Road traffic signal application. Make a motion we adopt okay. resolution 17 of 2018. And I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, okay, public comment on agenda items. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yes. This is off topic, but my impression of the, the latest uh, waste management people is that because it's automated, it seems like there's nobody there to watch for any loose litter or anything. 
and I see it all the time. People don't put like all their trash in bags and everything. And when the thing flips over the top, it drops like several bags or trash all the way down the road. And if this has happened through all the residents and everything, the $50 that each one of us save annually, I mean, I for one would rather pay the extra money to keep the trash off the road. And another thing is, I don't know about amending a law for notifying the public but from what I see is that the law requires notification in the newspaper where I feel that that's very dated and might you know, be a good idea to amend that to like update how you notify people for like. Yeah, what are, what are other townships doing? Are they the, doing it's, a, it's a state law yeah, state. that requires us to do it in that manner. So it's not our law or our no, our I know law. that but I didn't know if anybody could interject secondary like, idea you know what I mean something like that but and then on the trash topic uh, is that one of the complaints that you're getting is the trash in the in the road or is it more than missed stops uh, actually um, as I went home today by the way and found trash all over my driveway is why I ask <laughs> uh, I, I would I, I may put Noran on the spot here, as I think she's in the crowd. I, I don't recall getting citizen concerns relative to loose debris. And while I, I too have followed a truck and observe that the process of using the hydraulic long to lift yep. results in, in uh, de debris at the, at the point of collection, um, I would say that the, the move to automation overall has been positive from a windblown debris. The, 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 the carts that we bought, the 64 gallon carts and 35 gallon carts with the hinged lids prevent contamination or windblown trash prior to collection. So I, I would say the move to automation has been a, a net improvement in terms of the litter. Um, I will say also that, that I do observe exactly uh, what Mr. Kanapeski uh, brought up. There, at, on a windy day, at the point when that thing gets to Tip. 180 degrees or so and flips over, uh, yeah. Um, the contract requires the the hauler to clean up any debris that spreads at the point they're collecting. As a as a very difficult from a practical matter to enforce. And and then the last thing I'll say is we're required to go with the lowest qualified bidder. So when we talk about us going to bid it's not a matter of we're going to get six proposals and we can pick the company who we think the service is best from we go with the low bidder we're required to do so so it's entirely possible that if we were to not exercise our right for the fifth year and advertise that we would get the same hauler again and potentially at a higher price so i, I just want to you know, there's important considerations in, in the way we, we select a hauler, but unfortunately, we can't consider service as the primary reason we choose a hauler. Okay. And, and I would just point out that the, the mechanical uh, feature is primarily an issue with recycling. And I recently read that um, you actually degrade the quality of the recycling if people put it in plastic bags and then put it in a container. Right. You're not supposed to put plastic, you're not supposed to put recycling in a plastic bag because then it, it, it actually, well, yeah, so, it so ends up in trash when it goes to the sorting facility. Or, or worse, when it goes to the materials recovery facility, it, it actually clogs the equipment that's used to sort the different types of recyclables. So plastic bags, in general, aren't allowed in the recycle containers. Um, there is one notable exception, and that is, is if you have a clear plastic bag and you use it to contain, say, um, your shredded paper material, then that will be manually removed at the first stage of the assembly line and will not get through. But if you just throw your, your bag of Walmart bags in, in that will jam the equipment and is not accepted. Or if you collect your recyclables in a large plastic bag, yes. like those kitchen bags or the black bags, and then put it in the can, it's not going to end up being recycled.
Yeah. about trash tonight than I would ever care to. <laughs> okay, uh, any other public comment for uh, agenda items? And the date, do you know the date? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, uh, any other non, non uh, any other agenda item public comment? Okay, seeing none, uh, just would notice that uh, we did have the uh, conditional use hearing for Guthrieville Walk, and it was continued until June 7th. So we just want to get that out in the public, if anybody. I think we did put it on the website as well. Correct. Uh, that video was split into two parts, and also um, there is a calendar entry, and also on the homepage there is a story that has been following the progress to completion. Okay. And then uh, do we have to, uh, do we have any uh, executive session tonight? Uh, there might be one small matter. We okay, so we'll, we'll put it on record that the board will meet tonight in executive session for legal and or personnel issues. Um, and do I have a uh, notice to adjourn? So moved. And I second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you everybody. Thank you.